Well, good day there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. It's a beautiful day up here at Bush Camp, you guys, you know, like just right on. Today, you know, it's an exciting video today, guys, because we're going to be doing something exciting that I've been wanting to do for really a long time. And what that is, is milling lumber using a chainsaw mill or an Alaskan mill. We uh, buy a brand new chainsaw mill from Granberg and we put it to the, we set it up and we put it to the test here and learn how to mill. Now we also build a rail and bracket system as a guide for our initial cuts to use on the mill, as well as a really awesome workstation and ramp loading system for logs to work on the logs uh, on the mill. For that, we're gonna use some lumber that we milled ourselves, so it's really right on. It's gonna produce, we're hoping to produce some lumber to use around camp uh, for building projects. With the price of lumber the way it's at, it'll really save me a lot of money allowed me to take on a lot of projects that I want to uh, around camp and and the experience and introduction to it is really going to be a big thing you know like it's an awesome skill to learn working with lumber you know if I like it enough and find good enough trees I'll get a bandsaw mill and pursue it further as well as it's a useful skill I need to know how to do it for log building which is my next pursuit and uh, experience in that sort is really huge too so it's one step closer to that and i it just turned out awesome everything was just right on guys so i hope you enjoy this one guys it was really a lot of fun let's get right at her okay guys so we got our chainsaw here it's a 455 ratchet with a 20 inch bar it's 55 cc it's not the biggest saw to be running on the mill but for what I, we're doing i'm sure it's gonna work good now it's been a while guys since i've been this excited to tell you the truth Here's our chainsaw mill, and I can't wait to get into her, get her set up, and start making some lumber fence. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I decided to try and buy a pretty decent one. I didn't want any Chinese one. I don't like cheap shit. So we'll get right after it here, guys. Okay. These instructions are so painfully simple and obvious and so it's such a simple device I'd be wasting your time showing you how to set it up. So our chainsaw mill is an extremely simple piece of machinery. You can see on the bottom here we kind of have our contact points where it's going to ride on the lumber we're milling or on our rail system. That's what's going to ride here. We got some plexiglass to cover the tip of the bar. That's what that's for. It's very simple to fasten. There's our handle where it mounts to the bracket and squares everything up. And then how we adjust our depth of cut, if we wanna make two by fours, four by fours, or whatever have you, it's just um, the matter of tightening this U-bolt and raising the bar of the saw. So it's very simple. And here is the clamp for the bar. You don't have to drill through the bar or anything, but it, it just clamps on here. Um, so the chainsaw goes through here and then these two bolts just tighten down on the bar. Super simple mechanism, hopefully effective, definitely labor intensive, but I can't wait to build a pile of boards guys. Okay guys, so we need to make uh, brackets to hold our rails for this chainsaw mill. Now I think the best thing to use would be pieces of square tubing, uh, two inch by two inch or something comparable. The price of steel is so expensive to go 16 feet two times that would end up costing me a couple hundred bucks. What we're gonna do is use two by fours. So I bought this, this heavy duty plate, 12 inches by 12 inches. We're gonna come here. We're gonna go one and three to mark this two by two. It's gonna be four inches in depth. We're gonna, of course, cut this right in half. So there, you can see. So our quick, simple brackets are done. They didn't cost us too much. And I also drilled, this is to secure to the log we're milling, a couple screws. So guys, we sure got a lot to, <laughs> to mill up here and I am so excited. First thing we gotta do here is find the lumber our rails to use. We're just gonna run the saw straight across to it and we gotta find some two by fours because we're not gonna have rails till we get them. So we'll figure it out here. So I definitely didn't wanna spend a couple hundred bucks on the steel pieces, which would work the best that I might end up doing. I didn't even wanna spend the money on two by fours with the cost they're gonna be. So what I'm doing here, 
I'm gonna run the saw right on top and we need some two inch lumber. As long as it's the same height, we'll have to work it a bit. But I've taken the high spots off with the ax so it'll run smooth and not create the waviest piece of lumber you've ever seen. That worked not too bad. I was able to get through it, but it's constantly rocking, so it's not easy cutting. It actually turned out flatter than I think. I should be able to get it pretty good. I'm gonna raise this back up to two inch. I want true two inch lumber for my rails here. First decent slab coming off the mill here, friends. Look at this beauty. She's huge. Now, in doing this, I knew that I just gotta have exactly four inches and these edges be straight. So making my guide boards out of this green lumber was actually a touch tricky because this green lumber, it's gonna want to move as it dries and I need a perfectly straight cutting surface for the guides. Now the problem is, once I cut this board down the center, there was stress and it actually bowed out right away. So it was actually quite tricky to do. It would be much better to have dried boards, but uh, we just worked with what we had. I would really like to have a big hand plane to be able to really flatten the surface out perfectly. Well friends, we're milling there now. We got the chainsaw making some lumber. I got a start at it and got through the worst of the learning curve on my own time. You can see here, I got a 6x6 B milled up. We're getting a real good feel for it. Kind of a mess of stuff. Come on over here. So over here I got some of the first lumber I made. You know, it's not perfect. But it's getting to be pretty good, you know guys. I'm getting to have a good feel for it. Look at the, like this beautiful board here guys. Just a beauty. I made some 4x4s and these 6x6s were the first ones I did and I had saw failures on the way too so they are kind of buggered up a little bit. We'll still use them but that, I learned on them once eh? so they're not too pretty. So the very first lumber I'm milling and the first project I'm going to use with my old milled lumber is going to be a workstation to run this mill on. You can see I've got it designed up here. That's what I'm cutting these big tin timbers for. So if we can build an elevated surface where we can work, it's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot easier. We're out of the sawdust and uh, it'll be a real fun build and something we can use for many things. So let's get our timbers milled up. This is a lot, it really is a lot of fun. So we're gonna start here, this big 10 foot, it's kind of an ugly one, but we're gonna turn it into a six by six here. I'm just setting up these brackets I made. I want to show you guys this when it's easier to show you and more like how we'd be milling lumber on the workstation it'll be better to do a better demonstration then. But I'm just securing these brackets to make our initial cut and we'll show you the process here. <laughs>
this is why a workstation would be pretty nice. <laughs> So a while ago I bought this ventilator because quite honestly I fuck around with a lot of chemicals that are just really hard on a guy you know especially painting things and a lot of the industrial cleaners I use in the shop working on mechanics and stuff you know I didn't give up the darts just to get cancer from something else you know shit but anyway it works nice throwing that on uh, breathing in this real fine sawdust especially when the wind's blowing like this you know it's not fun it's hard to breathe in you see I also got these 3M work tunes for ear protection listening to this saw all day you'll just end up having a damn headache but you'll see me wearing them a lot because they play tunes eh i'm blaring the slipknot it makes it a lot more fun ripping through logs at rabbit speed another thing here guys is you're gonna see me dumping oil on this chain i've been adding bar oil liberally to the saw while it's cutting because even with this saw putting out as much oil as it can I still think it's getting too hot. Probably a bigger, better oiling saw would do better, but I really supplemented a lot to prevent the bar from getting too hot. Well, there's the beauty of it guys turning that ugly tree into a beautiful usable big old timber this one's got a lot of bark on it i only need eight feet of it though see don't worry about this i'll just draw a knife it off i only need eight feet this piece i don't even need but that's the beauty got a whole bunch of scraps though you know fuck off so i got this big beautiful saw log you know like little taper just a big beautiful log we're gonna try and get four four by fours all out of this one nice straight log. <laughs> friends so it's time to start building this beauty we're gonna do a little chainsaw carpentry here and build just this top-notch thing out of the lumber we already got isn't that something so well, yeah guys we'll do everything just with the chainsaw using the materials we just got fresh off the mill we're building with it green because we need it right away so it might move around a bit uh, that's why we weren't too concerned about the lumber trying to get it just totally perfect <laughs> Because this is green wood, I am coating the ends so they don't check and dry out faster. 
We'll just lightly nail it and then square it up and then really secure it good. Perfect. I got these huge lag bolts to really hold these corners together. I wish I could drill farther and maybe I wish I had washers for these now that I think of it, but she's good and strong I tell ya. Beauty. Put my impact to work too. See there's a bow to these and it's cut me down quite a bit here. Straighten it up. Send it. Okay guys, so one of my big ideas behind the workstation is that I was gonna build it there and then I wouldn't have to move all those logs into camp, but I just don't just want this workstation to stay there because it's no use to me out just in the middle of the bush. So I wanted to make it somewhat portable. Now it might just be heavy enough that I can't move it around too easy. So I'm, I'm designing it to detach into two different pieces. And we'll see how it goes. Um, it's poplar wood, so once it, once it dries out, you might actually be able to load it onto a trailer, not too bad. But all the same, for really no extra cost, I got some big three quarter inch threaded rod, and we're gonna cut four 11 inch pieces here right now. So guys, instead of fussing with having two nuts on this thing, why don't I just weld it and make make big bolts, you know? I think that's just better than having to reach all the way around. This is what I want. And you know, good cheap heavy duty fasteners here. So I'm just welding them up quick. Don't have to be pretty. Nothing too fancy about how I'm doing that. Well guys, it's another beauty day here. We're setting the legs. They're big old six by six legs for a lot of support. You know, this is gonna be heavy. See, I have got the whole thing leveled and then I'm using these braces to set where this needs to go and where it needs to be leveled.
See, so do the same on this side. Now it's level both all the ways, you know. It may move around some, but at least it won't look too silly, eh? It's not too important as long as it won't look too silly. Beauty. Should be good now, guys. Fuck. Oh yeah, she's a beauty. Beauty. These are my rafts. Big heavy six by sixes. Probably overkill. Probably don't give a fuck. Beauty. Real a beauty. Well guys, I had a change of plan as how I was gonna do this. I actually don't have any real big auger bits. I wanted to go through here, but I'm not gonna be able to because I can't drill from this side because I'm gonna have to drill this through all the sides. So I am gonna go um, in like this here kind of deal. It's not quite ideal. <laughs> Take some thinking about. We're gonna try and drill through right like this, and then I'm gonna countersink it. So mark half here. We're not a countersink bit, sorry, I'm just using a hole saw. Is I gotta try and drill this. Dead on. Put a washer on her bolt here. See daylight in the hole. Well friends, all of a sudden I have quite a work site here, don't I? I brought the trailer uh, to load lumber on. I thought it would be so much easier. You know, drop the trailer there, don't have to unload it all the time and not filling up my truck, just load that, that'll work good. I brought my quad, cause that's how I'm gonna move the logs around. And it's oriented this way, because the wind's gonna come from this way and throw the sawdust that way. I don't wanna be working against the wind, it's gonna be plugging up my saw, everything. Our workstation turned out really good. Um, it's really nice, man, and it's so satisfying having built that with my own lumber. Uh, the finishing touches, or I just put two four by fours across and they're recessed half an inch down because I actually don't want the log rolling on them. They're just holding the ramps together. Uh, the one thing I would do differently is the, the design on the ramp. I would push the six by six back. I already got enough bearing surface and I wouldn't connect it with the through bolts quite the same way I did. I would change that a bit, but it's still really, really good. Now the idea here is to load these big, like look at this fucking log, it's huge. Is to load them with the log skitter I built, you know, a video or two ago, you guys will remember, this beauty. Now originally I was gonna hook this up to my truck and use my truck as the anchor, cause it wasn't gonna move that. But I had just not quite the right hitch. <laughs> Didn't fit. 
So I'm gonna try this. I don't wanna too much stress on my quad, but this is just gonna back up and hit this. Here's the thing. This is plenty strong enough, but this Princess Auto winch, it was so fucked. Like, look at it. It doesn't latch properly. It's just a piece of shit. I'm so sick of that fucking store, man. You know, guys, like, it doesn't even last the job. And I knew when I bought that, I was like, I'm gonna regret this. So we'll probably put a better winch on there. Let's see if we can load a log here. This log is like 14 feet, just about, and huge. And I built this really a gradual slope so that it would be easier pulling. I'm just, just learning here. I don't have enough cable on this winch either to hook it up properly. So I'm just dragging the log instead of it rolling. So we probably need to work on this, but. See this winch, it doesn't want to lock and I got to be careful. Like if this log rolls on you, you're pretty, looking pretty silly. See, I'm catching on these big knots on my center and it would come better if it wasn't rolling. Better winch and a better anchor point, like my truck. And this would be just top notch. This log skitter works great for this. It's the right height. See? Oh. Well, we got her up there. And not too bad. We're learning, friend. Fuck yeah, we are. So guys, this log is in fact tapered. So we're gonna make our first cut tapered and then our lumber is more centered. Um, so we try and level it off, uh, kind of reduce the taper. Here we can see, I'm gonna mill this one. It's it's about 13 inches. Now this don't have to be perfect, but if we drop it down some on the bigger end, it's just gonna improve our quality of lumber. I don't know. I, I have formed very few cants at this point, so I'm just kind of getting a feel for it still. But I like to try and eyeball and see what kind of lumber I'm gonna get out of this. I don't mind if I get some bark in there. But the truth is, I'm not too concerned about waste because these are poplar trees. I got a shitload of them and they're really not worth too much, is the thing. Time savings is huge. Like with the chainsaw mill, it takes so long to get through them. I don't care if I, I'm not as worried about waste. Um, so I don't know. I'm probably going to drop this down. I'm going to measure down about an inch and a half on this one. We'll make that little mark. Then we'll go to the other side, remembering that this is 13 inches. At the butt here, we can see it's actually like, it's it's 15 inches. But it that's this, this one's actually an unusual one where it's got this weird dip here. And you can actually see it's just a piece that's about this far. Show ya. It's just this little piece. I don't want to use that measurement because it's not really that accurate as to the shape of the log. I think it's more like 14. At, at most, uh, maybe even 13 and a half is more where this the bottom of this log actually is, despite this last couple inches. So if I say this is 13 and a half, and that size 13 inches, I have half an inch of taper amongst the whole log, which is very little. So then to center this up, I'm gonna take half of that taper, which is half an inch, take half of that half inch of taper, so a quarter inch and add it to the inch and a half. I dropped it down over here and I'm going to come down an inch and three quarters. Okay, simple. So now we're going to set up our rail system. This works pretty good. And I put a lot of holes in this because sometimes you don't have a lot of material to grab. It's really nice to have a lot of holes in this. And I like it really on there secure. So I'm just coming a touch above my line. Okay, now I'm just gonna level it. So that's perfectly level. And by leveling both of these at this mark, it'll be perfectly, you know, it's in the same plane, it's not twisted. 
And I like to secure these in good because it takes no time at all. That's all there is to that. Let's go to the other side. And of course, we're gonna do exactly the same thing over here, making sure she's level. So these are my boards, guys, and they're not too good. <laughs> They've moved around a bit and they're not perfect. I'm hoping to make some new boards on this big timber. So you can see, guys, I have the mill set up at just the perfect distance where it just clears underneath here. And, uh, it's better to clear a bit much than uh, waste a whole bunch of time sharpening because you hit steel, so. <laughs> so we'll fire this saw up and just get to cut and then you better have nowhere else to go because <laughs> it's gonna take you a minute. After making that first cut, you're kind of left with, you know, your big piece and depending how much t taper there is to her. But usually I like to go about right where the wood ends and then kind of look if I go right where the wood ends on either side. So here's my straight board. And you can eyeball this, but I'm just using my board for the demonstration. But if I cut right where the wood ends on either side on this log, I'm going to get a nice cut here. Uh, I'm going to take some bark on the edge of my first board. But I'm not going to lose too much, hey? I might lose some here. And you can kind of play around with where you want to draw that line, eh? And it's square with the top, so we're creating a square piece of lumber here. And I'll just draw this line. So there's a big, big old heifer. I'll roll her over. You know, it's a big log. And... So it's actually very simple, you know. Now we got this line drawn on either side. It doesn't have to be level. They're in line with each other already. Secure our two plates and you know, it's not much to it. Okay, so now we cut, but I should, ha I should have the saw running this way and I might still, because it's easier if the mill rides on the flat surface then on this surface, so I might cut from this side. I should have it flipped the other way, but it's okay. You see, we got her good and square. You know, she's 90 degrees and looking good. See, we just grabbed a touch of bark here without wasting too much, so that's right on. Now I came to the smaller end. See, now it's a matter of how far do I want to cut this. Like I could come down and cut to here and then make smaller boards off the bottom, or if I wanted them all uniform nine and a half, I'd cut to here. But I think I am going to come down a little further than this. I'm going to cut to 10 and uh, we'll see what that does. I've been playing around with that a lot. Is one thing I haven't perfected is how big I want to make these. Anyway, it's not as important. We got all kinds of timber here. You see friends, we only got to set up a rail system for our first two cuts. Now we got two, two flats that are 90 degrees exactly. Now I've got my guide, my mill set to where I want to cut this. And I'm going to run the mill on top of the log and cut the bottom. It's easier. It's way quicker. Okay guys, so now we got that third side leveled. I uh, just flip it so the last side is on the bottom. When we start ripping off boards, these here are true 2 by 10s and they're going to be deadly. Sure got some beauty boards off that one guys. Big heavy timbers. But I had to make, I made some better, better guide boards. So I can get some a little bit straighter initial cuts on my rails because they are only going to be as straight as your your uh, guide 2x4s are. Well guys, I also have some smaller pieces cut here and uh, I actually need some more shelving around camp in my cabin 
and for storage purposes. So that's what we're going to do here right now. You can see, that's why I put the centerpiece. So we can mill shorter than eight foot and big fuckers too. So guys, out of the, just that little tree, I got these five beautiful one inch boards. I also got one that's just about big enough so it's kind of live edge. And uh, isn't that something, man, them are beautiful. This actually works deadly loading. Like it's 16 foot log, it's huge. If I, if I had a little better winch, the right kind of winch, with the right kind of strap that could roll the log, as well as a better anchor I, instead of my quad, I would horse these up no problem. It really is gonna work good. Even now it's working good, it's just not totally perfect. See guys, that's pretty deadly. A log of that size, I'll take that. Beauty. Another beauty day at camp. Beauty day working in the bush. Now it's time to head around back to camp. We're getting tired here now. It's like 10.30. Looking good guys, a lot of fun. So that really, everything really turned out awesome here guys. You know, it's been a beauty. Uh, our workstation is awesome. I really like it. It works really good loading logs. We're gonna make some fine tuned adjustments, but it's right on. Our, our bracket system is good. Maybe work on the rails a bit, you know, but it, I'm really glad I'm doing it. You know, it's been really beneficial to me. I've learned a lot. I'm having fun doing it. We're producing something, you know, that's right on. Now what I plan to do guys is just sit down and mill all those logs. It's gonna take a long time, but just get them all done. Build a huge pile of lumber and have it on hand. Get it stacked up and drying and have all that lumber on hand. So I'm saving trips to the lumber store, saving money and have that lumber for all the projects I wanna take on here around camp. So that's the plan. And we're gonna do that in a video. It might not be quite the next one, but very soon it'll come out hopefully. And we're just gonna get right at her and mill up a shitload of lumber and it should be right on guys. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed and hope all the friends are doing just great.